Look, um, I am. I'm actually kind of feeling this um, less pressure to be. Again, I'm. I'm always have some videos where I'm just on camera. Uh, that content's coming back is more dedicated content. Um, so for for folks listening, last episode. I did audio only, so no image. And actually, the episode did fairly well. I don't know if it was because of the topic or just because I have this nice visualizer um, over here on Facebook. But, again, I felt like it got got some eyes on it. Uh, feel free, again, if you're over on the podcast, to check us out over on Facebook. You can find me over at Justin M. Official over at Facebook. Just Justin Morgan's the page. Of course, you can find my personal page as well, all the link info with stuff is in the description if you're listening this or watching this after the fact over on uh, anchor or youtube of course our podcast is over at ampodcast.net if you've not checked that thing out yet shame 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 all right do me a favor y'all share this with a friend a family member and even that worst family member that sits at the table and takes the last biscuit i know we hate that person but that person will need this information too because today i'm gonna give you the techie take right the techie take on membership platforms not just the you know there's the marketing tape there's 10 tips on how to grow a, a membership there's 10 tips on how to build a million dollar course this is a tech person's take on what I feel the proper components are to having a, an efficient, right, an efficient and excellent membership platform experience should look. So um, my question for you for today is what is your biggest question when it comes to building out a membership platform is it because you just aren't a tech person you just don't know the first thing to do it's like justin i just can't sit down like just the option is the the task of sitting down and recording this stuff is enough so look leave that question leave your answer down in the comments i want to know your biggest challenge okay so again a techie take on memberships now just so you know again i'm I'm Justin Morgan, if y'all have not seen or heard already, and I work with coaches and speakers and I help them create automated systems to save time and generate more revenue. And so over the years, the thing that has helped add to my credentials is not just me working behind a computer, but I also work behind a production desk. Right. So production desk, I mean, I worked behind. Uh, so I, I sit in a booth while people went in front of a camera and recorded their stuff. And I worked the mixer, right? So I worked the big audio video board. Um, so working the audio board is really what it is. Don't don't come it with me with all the terminology to say I worked the audio board, uh, meaning all the things you pull down the tracks. But look, I didn't go to school for this stuff. I just happened to learn it on the fly, uh, and then happened to continue to use that knowledge I learned on the fly for more than it, you know, for, for more than once. Let's just say, um, I, I did it fairly regularly after that. So, um, got really good at working and helping folks record and working out of the studio and, and potentially, um, being a producer or an audio engineer, video engineer, whatever you want to call it, okay? And so folks would come into the studio and have to record these these long, like long sessions of recording content. Long. So we would we would dedicate an entire day to recording out a course. And it would turn out sometimes, I think there was a couple of cases well, we didn't finish in one day. We had to come back and finish another day just because something would happen. Um, you know, they they may slack. They may have showed up late. They may have been struggling. We would even get folks sometimes who just would not prepare for the session. They get in there and they would act like they just their content, like it was the first time they've ever taught it, which is a whole other story all by itself. But it wasn't comfortable to do it was very embarrassed it was it was it was kind of cringy to do but it was my job to still help them make it through that session now we would spend forever on that content like forever on that content they would do it they would record it we would take that content back okay 
give it off to the team. The team would then process all that stuff, edit all that stuff. We get it uploaded on YouTube and into a membership platform. And that was it. Now, I remember there were some frustrations I always had with this process. One, these folks are in there. They pay all this money to get in the studio. And at the end of the day, they spend all this time and effort before even getting the course up to make sure they can get people into the course. So that's one. Uh, two, within the membership platform, again, at this point in time, y'all just understand I was a cog in the wheel. So I didn't get to pick or elect which membership platform or tool we use. Let's just say I didn't love it. There's some things I didn't I didn't enjoy about it. And I certainly it certainly had some frustrations in setting it up, but it did the job. Right. So it's not the end all be all, but it, it did the job. And then lastly, after we did all that, they did all the investment, get the thing, we set up everything. At the end of the day, they would get zero people into the course um, after all the work, time, and energy. And not because we didn't do our job, but because of some of the upfront work and some of the consistent work after the fact um, wasn't done properly. And so I have to I had to kind of take a step back and take a look and think about if I had to reimagine or at least take some of the core things that were done right in that process and some things that were done wrong in that process overall or some things I would like to see done differently, I shouldn't say wrong, but done differently, what would we do differently to properly put up and create a course? Okay, so I'm going to give y'all some nuts and bolts here. So I'm again, this is no on-screen walkthrough. Y'all got to pay for that. Right, y'all gotta pay for that, but I'm gonna give y'all because uh, this is up front, right? But I'm gonna still give y'all some good stuff right here so y'all can see it, um, or at least understand it and hear it. So I'm gonna give y'all some nuts and bolts, I'm gonna give y'all some goodies. And again, this is a techie take on memberships. So again, if y'all looking for the guru's take on memberships, you in the wrong spot, okay? So, first off, the first thing some of these are gonna be some, some of these things may seem some of these things can be all obvious. I'm just gonna just just red alert heads up. Other things though, some things we're gonna discuss um, that I want y'all to think about. I want, want y'all to consider whether you have that currently in your membership platform. So let's think about it. So first off, obviously you have a system that checks them out, right? So you gotta have a place to actually have people pay. Okay. Now I know, like Justin, that's that's obvious. People gotta pay to get in the membership. Yes, but here's the caveat: you need to have a system in place where, when they pay, they get access. That seems like it should be self-explanatory, but being as it may, I've been at this thing for a while. It's not always. Just letting you know, it's not always. Now there are enough good platforms out there now where this has become easier, but there's still some cases where this is not always the case. Okay, so when they check out, they should get the mechanism or at least get the next step to get access to their thing. Okay, so that's number one. So it's really checking out, but getting automatic access to the next step. I know that one thing that we do is, so again, with our stuff is a little more high touch. So we have to have clients sign contracts and stuff like that. But once they sign the contract and there's an email they get sent out that has everything, that has them go in and then set up their membership account. That's nice because they get more control over the email and the password and all that stuff. And there's less excuses about, oh, hey, you know, I said uh, I paid for it, but, you know, the system didn't send it. It's like, no, nah, if you went and signed up, you picked the email and the password. Um, if you jack something up, it, like you did it. It was your fault. Period. Okay. That's help. That's helpful. You know, that's helpful. So that's one. Okay. So that's that's one part. Number two. Number two. Have an intro video. It seems common sense, but don't just have an intro video inside of the system or inside of the membership. Have an intro video sent direct to them via text message. Why do I say that? Because we are human beings that get busy. And anytime, especially in this space where everybody's buying everything, they could buy your course one day and then be on to the next one tomorrow. And when they do that, there becomes this thing where they say, hey, I bought this. I forgot all about it. Oh, my gosh, it's a scam. They've been charging me. It's like, nah, they, 
you bought it and you just forgot it. You got distracted. You you had a short memory. You 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 were acting like a 10-year-old. You're into everything all at once. So the way that you can counteract that is to not just have a, a video inside the platform, but send a video directly to their phone and a link. So it should be on like YouTube or Vimeo, something like that. So send it direct to them after they sign up. And that video should be something like this. Hey, we appreciate you signing up. Um, we appreciate you being a part of this. Here's what you need to do. Step A, B, C, and D. If you don't do these things, you will probably fail at this course. Period. That's it. That's all your video should do. What that does is, again, it creates accountability for them and removes excuses. But also, it pushes them. It says, okay, well. All right, they're giving they really are walking me through every single step. And so as a tech person, right, I'm obsessed with walking people through steps. Uh, my first job out of college, first real job was working in a call center. And so I literally had to walk people through a website to get them to register in order to have themselves set up for the livelihood. And sometimes I'm working with folks who are older than um, that ornament in your grandmother's uh, attic, right? And I say that because, like, they're ancient, ancient, as in, like, you may find stories about them in the Bible, ancient, sometimes that you end up on the phone with these folks. Um, and so it, it becomes very challenging to be able to walk them through step by step through the process at the same time it, part of my benefit and why i feel like i'm fairly good at what i do now is because i had to go through that frustration of walking people through step by step and so i've become good at oversimplifying things because when you're a tech person most people regurgitate everything to you uh to other folks and continue to go over their head um, but I've learned that it's best to oversimplify in order to help people get through a process. And so uh, my approach is to have too many simple steps versus just kind of throwing like everything and saying, OK, figure it out. Right. Like oversimplification is a good thing because people can skip through. That's the thing. People can skip through. The people that got it can skip through. Um, the people that don't got it. And uh, you don't they get lost then. Right. So it's better to oversimplify. OK, so that's that's that piece. Just keep that part in mind. OK. Next thing, payment reminders. So the same way that you sent them a text message when they joined, you should also consider setting up some automated payment reminders. Now, some systems are good, depending on what processor you have. Um, sometimes they give heads up on when payments are going to be coming out. Uh, but a lot of systems don't. And so what you're going to find is like, you get that angry call or you're going to get an, and it's the worst call. It's so annoying. Like I, I can't stand the call, but it's part of life, right? Like I typically, when somebody charges me and I just forgot about it, I eat it because it was my fault because here's what happens. Uh, when y'all go ask for your refunds, cause you messed up cause you were late. It usually costs the business money. So when they cancel, they're actually losing money. They're not just giving you money back, but there's processing fees they often lose out on that they give back, right? So, yeah. So when when y'all think you just, oh, you know, give me my money back, it's no problem, you actually are caused, causing them to lose money. Now, this may not be a big deal for Amazon, but for that small business owner that y'all been trying to support or talking about how y'all want to support, you know, you costing them money. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but that stuff adds up. So just just a little thing in mind. Anyway, enough of my little rant. It's important to have those reminders because they allow, again, further less excuse that, hey, there's this thing. Uh, 
you know, uh, I want my money back at the scam, blah, blah, blah. Or now you got to do chargebacks. Like, you don't want to do that stuff. It's, it's, it's hampering. It's dampering. It, it, it costs you money and time. So it's best to give them a heads up beforehand. But also you can sneak in some tips and tricks in there as well on those reminders if you'd like, depending on how you want to do them. And so that way people actually do continue to use your system. Okay, so that's just another thing. All right, um, drip functions. So it is good if you have a platform that can drip out content over time. Now, a lot of platforms do, but it's often we forget that that function is there. And what that function does is just make sure, and again, it gets to that how to breaking down and oversimplifying the process, giving things to people in the order and the timeliness in which they need it. Um, sometimes giving too much stuff can hamper them. Right. Depends on the program. Um, so it is sometimes good to have that drip function just so people not, aren't getting everything at one time. It's like, Justin, what is drip? Um, drip is just like imagine the faucet and you imagine it's leaking. Right. So every drop is coming out a bit at a time. Um, you didn't just open the whole faucet up or just take a baseball bat and knock that thing off and have all the water coming out all at one time. No. Um, you got it dripping one droplet at a time. So you got the content coming out all at one droplet at one time. That's a drip function. So you can schedule it so it's sending out content a day at a time, month at a time, week at a time, whatever you decide to do. Structure is the next point. So the next thing you want to think about is structure. Okay, okay, structure. All right, fine. So think about the old school straight up you open up a word document and you got the bullet points on there right or you got the letters so you got point a and then you got Roman numeral one and then you got like the small letter a right there's structure there's tiers to it there's categories and subcategories and sub subcategories those are important you want to be able to structure your course in a way that's organized uh, and again, a lot of platforms have this stuff. I just want you to be aware that this stuff exists and you should use it. Right? It's important to use structure, very important to use structure and to organize and to separate and to do it in a way that makes it easy for people to find what they need. It is beautiful when I invest in something, I invest in a platform and I log in and it's just so easy to find everything that I need. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Next, you want to be able to monitor the progress and the activity on your platform. This is one that is that is not that is that is kind of overlooked. Because a lot of places have this function, is just that I don't think we pay enough attention to it on a regular basis. So for example, you got your program and the folks are saying, hey, I don't get it, I can't do it, like I, I'm not making any results. And they tell you that they went through everything. The beauty of being able to track progress is you can go in, you can see when people logged in. You can see what part they went through and marked complete, what parts they skipped. And you can call them out. You can call them out. Right. And that helps everybody because it helps them be accountable. Um, it helps you better focus your program Maybe there's something that needs to be taken out. Maybe there's a step that needs to be added in. Whatever that thing is, being able to track progress and then not just having the ability to, but actually doing, which is the thing I feel like most folks miss, is you have the ability to do all these things I'm talking about today. It's just a matter of the doing of the thing. That's important. Next. Monitor, so... So next, so you did a monitor. So the next pieces are kind of bonus, little icing on the cake things. Quizzes and certifications. Um, those are nice, right? It depends on what you're doing. So if you're not doing a certification, then obviously you don't need this function. And quizzes are nice. But again, depends on what you're doing. It may not really be quiz appropriate, right? If it's about self-discovery, it's kind of hard to create a solid quiz on self-discovery that's relevant. Anyway, that's useful. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Affiliate functions. 
Um, now, there are other ways to set up referrals and things of that nature. But if you want other folks to share on your behalf and you get paid by them putting out all the effort of promoting and marketing your thing, you should consider an affiliate function. And then lastly, gamification. Now, what's gamification? Part of the word. Game. It's creating competition, creating a award system, a reward or award system inside of the system that gives people stuff for doing stuff. All right. So the same way that you would log into an app, I know, like Justin, very eloquently put, huh, getting pay, getting stuff for doing stuff. Yep. Very eloquently put. I got it. Same way that you log on to Candy Crush or, I don't know, Justin, like, wait, 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 Candy Crush, what's that? Um, whatever game you're playing, whether it be like, you know, folks went to the Pokemon Go craze, um, there's what, was like War of Something, there's plenty of games you could be playing right now on your phone. But every day that you log into some of the games, they give you bonuses for just logging in on a regular basis. So think of that in terms of your platform and your membership and your course. How can you award people for doing things? Is it giving them money back, giving them badges, giving them extra perks? The same way that video games work. Um, video games do a very good job of keeping you addicted. Casinos do a very good job of keeping you addicted and giving you benefits and giving you perks. The psychology behind this stuff that these people have mastered. If you study them enough, you'll find some ways to benefit. So, for instance, like when I think of um, casinos and I think of the adult world. So my son asked me a question, I think, the other day. And he was talking about um, the color of a school bus. And we we're talking about why a school bus is yellow. And I'm like, well, it stands out. I think he was asking, why aren't there more bright colored cars? I mean, I really I think I said, I don't know if I said exactly this way, but essentially I said adults are boring. Um, and then most folks, when they create cars, you know, they have to make it for the masses. And the more people are willing and able to like and settle for the color black or gray or silver than they are to love bright yellows and bright blues and bright greens and et cetera, et cetera. So most car manufacturers make basic colors for that reason. Cause, but that's like the adult world. It's kind of very blah. But when you step into a casino, and this, this, there's, a, there's a reason I mentioned that first. When you step into a casino, all the things are colorful. They're bright. It's noisy and loud. There are tones, sounds that go along with every single chance, movement, um, opportunity that you may have to win on a game. It's very much like pulling you back into the world of being a kid. It's bright colors, loud noises, um, lots of sensory input, and we eat that stuff up. Like we eat it up. We we, we die like our our mental digest that stuff on a level that we cannot control. And so when I say gamification, I, I don't say that you need to necessarily do all that and run your membership like a casino. But what I am saying is that there are certain mental psychological functions and principles that you can utilize and take advantage of let's keep it keep it real what it is you can take advantage of um, that allow people to interact more with your platform and that's it so again those are the key things that is a techie take on memberships if y'all thought this stuff was useful you need more you want help um, you need to get yourself a tech team you need to get yourself some automation in your life go ahead to automatewithease.com again it is automatewithease.com it's a free training go check it out and i go more into how you can build out an automated business okay so um, with that all being said make sure you share this with a friend a family member or even again a foe because 
those folks need this information too i appreciate you and all that you do i'll see you in the next episode and as usual treat each day as a building block to a better future peace Thank you.